Hello, dear students. I am assistant of professor in the department, pathological department of Saratov State Medical University, and today I will tell you about disorders of blood circulation. There are three groups of blood circulation disorders. First group, disorders of blood feeding. Is example hypermia ischemia. The next group, vessel wall permeability um, derangement. The hemorrhages, bleeding, plasmorrhagia. And the last group is blood rheological property derangement. The stasis, thrombosis, embolism, sludge phenomenon, DIC syndrome. And first information about hyperemia. There are two groups of hyperemia, arterial or active and passive or venous hyperemia. And first information about arterial or active hyperemia. Definition. Arterial hyperemia is increase of an organ blood filling due to excessive flow of arterial blood. Blood outflow is not changed. According to prevalence, arterial Arterial hyperemia can be general and local. General arterial hyperemia may be as erythremia. We see increase of erythrocyte quantity only without increased volume of blood. And plethora, increase of circulating blood volume up to 10-15 liters. What about local arterial hyperemia? There are two groups of local arterial hyperemia. Physiological condition in case of emotional reactions, work hyperemia, and pathological. What about pathological local hyperemia? There are six types of pathological local arterial hyperemia. And neurotic as a result of irritation of nerves. Vacate or vacuum in zone, in zone of um, a negative pressure. We see uh, enlarged arterial vessels. Due to arterial venous fistula. Collateral. Due to obstruction of large trunk of arteria. We see collateral blood flow open and hyperemia in collateral vessels. Due to inflammation, we see arterial hyperemia and red color of inflammative zone. And hyperemia following anemia or ischemia. After ischemia, after extraction of uh, etiological factor, after ischemia, we can see hyperemia in zone of ischemia. Which anatomical manifestations of arterial hyperemia? Red skin and mucous membrane and internal organs. Hypertension, arterial type and rise of temperature. This positive process favorable outcome. More often is a compensatory adaptive process. There is no structural changes in the organs and outcome is favorable. In this photo you can see people with uh, arterial hyperemia, red color of skin, red mucous membranes. In contrast Venous or passive hyperemia is negative process, is unfavorable process. What's this? Venous hyperemia is increased blood filling in the tissue and organs due to obstructed outflow of venous blood. According to the prevalence, venous hyperemia can be general and local according to the course, acute and chronic. Which causes 
of general venous hyperemia. There are many, many causes, but one main cause, disturbance of normal work of heart. As an acute general venous hyperemia, acute cardiac, acute heart or cardiac pulmonary decompensation, acute myocardial infarction, acute myocarditis, pneumothorax, the chronic general venous hyperemia, which causes chronic cardiac insufficiency due to chronic ischemic heart diseases, due to heart troubles, due to chronic myocarditis or pneumosclerosis. Anatomical changes. Organs are enlarged, has solid consistency, and tissue uh, have uh, has a uh, dark red color with cyanotic changes. Due to acute course, which morphological changes in the tissues is due to venous hyperemia? At first, we see hyperemia in the veins. The next stages, the next edema of stroma or edema in the lungs. The next diapedesis of erythrocytes and dystrophy of parenchyma. As a result, we can see necrosis of parenchyma. Due to chronic course, at first we see edema too, as a result of permeability increased due to hypoxia. The next diapedesis of erythrocytes and dystrophy of parenchyma. As a result of dystrophy of parenchyma, we can see necrosis in the cells. But through several days or weeks, we can see stroma ex uh, expanding or the growth of stroma, growth of connective tissue. And as a result of growth of connective tissue in the stroma, we can see sclerosis in the organs. Which consequences of acute and chronic course? As the acute course, the process is irreversible with the necrosis of tissues and cells. Due to chronic course, at first we see as a result of hypoxia we see parenchyma atrophy and stroma sclerosis and uh, changes in the organs architectonic, organ cirrhosis, for example in the liver. Organopathology of chronic course, natmic liver, Brown in duration of the lungs, cyanotic in duration in the spleen or in the kidneys. And more about each of them. What's this nutmeg liver? Due to chronic course, we can see changes in the cells and stroma and liver becomes as a nutmeg in the cut. Why? As a result of double venous blood circulation, what can we see? We see enlarged central vein and hemorrhages in the central zones. In the periphery zone of lobules, at first time, after, uh, after start of venous hyperemia, we can see compensatory reaction, hypertrophy of hepatocytes. But through several days or weeks or months, uh, we can see, as a result of hypoxia, we can see fatty dystrophy. As a result, we see hemorrhage in the central zone of um, lobules and fatty dystrophy in the periphery zone of lobules. Its situation looks like as a nutmeg liver. Liver is enlarged, has solid consistency. In the cut, we see picture as a nutmeg. In the lung, we see a brown in duration. Why? At first, we see edema of lung, appearance of water, of liquid 
in the alveoli as a result of increase of vessel wall permeability. The next, we see diapedesis of erythrocytes and appearance of erythrocytes in the alveoli. The next step, we see appearance of macrophages, siderophages, and appearance of hemosiderin, brown color, brown resty color. And as a result of chronic hypoxia, this chronic venous hyperemia, we see growth of connective tissue. Look, in this photo you can see many macrophages with uh, um, hemosiderin of brown color and growth of connective tissue around veins and in the intraalveolar septums. In duration means consolidation. Uh, and duration means solid consistency as a result of growth of connective tissue. In the spleen and kidneys, we see cyanotic in duration. Organs are enlarged, have solid consistency and cyanotic changes. What about local venous hyperemia? Which causes of local venous hyperemia? We see in the single organ changes as well as due to general venous hyperemia. As a result of venous congestion, as a result of thrombosis or embolism, as a result of vein compression with help of tumor, scar, fluid, and due to collateral venous hyperemia by opening of portocaval shunts in the lung, for example. Venous hyperemia is irreversible and unfavorable process. What's this ischemia? We talked about hyperemia and, in contrast, ischemia. What the, the process? It's decrease of organ or tissue blood supply due to insufficient of arterial flow. Ischemia can be general acute and chronic and local acute and chronic. General ischemia means anemia. We will tell about in the blood diseases. Now we will tell about only local type of ischemia, acute and chronic. There are four types of ischemia according to the development mechanism. Angiospastic is the result of vasospasm. Irritation of vasoconstrictive nerves, obstruction ischemia, arterial occlusion by thrombus or embolus, compression ischemia, arterial compression from the outside with help of tumor, tourniquet, commissures or liquid, and redistributive, blood redistribution of zone of arterial hyperemia to the zone of arterial hyperemia. Which morphological signs of ischemia? Organ size reduction. Organ is decrease in size. Has flabby consistency. Pale color and wrinkled capsule. In this photo you can see uh, hand with ischemia, pale, cool, with pain, with ischemic pain. In this photo you can see hyperemia in the left side, in the left um, leg, and ischemia in the right leg. Which ischemia outcomes? Maybe without consequences in case of endospastic form. Due to acute form, due to full obstruction of arterial vessel, we see degeneration and necrosis, infarction formation. Due to chronic or due to partial obstruction of arteria, we see atrophy and sclerosis in the organs as a result of chronic ischemia. The next, the next process is bleeding or 
hemorrhages. What's this bleeding? Blood outflow from the cardiac cavities or end vessels lumen outward the body or into the tissues and internal cavities. As a result, we can see internal bleeding and external bleeding. Which examples of external bleedings? Hemoptysis hemoptoia from the lungs, nasal hemorrhages, epistaxis, blood vomiting, hematomesis, Blood, bloody stools, melena, uterine bleeding, metrorrhagia. Which examples of internal bleeding? We see accumulation of blood in the cavities. For example, hemopericardium. We see accumulation of blood in the pericardium cavity. Hemothorax in the pleural cavity. Hemoperitoneum in the abdominal cavity, hemarthrosis in the joints cavity. Which mechanisms of bleeding? First, ves vascular wall rupture, hemorrhagia per rexin, with a rupture of large vessels or heart. The next mechanism, vascular wall erosion due to action of necrosis or inflammation, hemorrhagia per diabrosin, and diabetes of erythrocytes is a result of increase of vessel wall permeability, hemorrhagia per diabetes. Hemorrhage. What is this hemorrhage? Is blood accumulation in the tissues. As example of hemorrhages, petechia, small hemorrhages, is a result of diabetes. Bruises under the skin we see formation of hemorrhage. Hemorrhagic infiltration without destruction of tissue in zone of hemorrhage. And hematoma with destruction of cells in zone of hemorrhage. Which outcomes of hemorrhages? Resorption due to infiltration, for example, and due to bruises formation. Organization or encapsulation. What's this organization? Replacement zone of hematoma, for example, to connective tissue. Or formation of capsule, connective tissue cap capsule around zone of hemorrhage. Cyst formation with rusty color in the spinal cord or in the brain. And separation is a secondary bacteria inflammation. Which consequences of bleedings and hemorrhages depending on hemorrhage speed, hemorrhage volume, and localization of process? In this photo, you can see diabetic hemorrhages in the brain. Small hemorrhages for brain is very aggressive and very important. Small petechia in the mucous membrane. Petechia, small hemorrhages in the skin. In the hypophys. For brain, this process is very um, important and serious. For skin, not very serious. Under the mucous membranes or serous membranes. Bruises, bruises, and bruises. Hemopericardium is absolutely lethal situation. Hematoma of brain is very serious and lethal situation. The next process is thrombosis. What's this thrombosis? It's a lifetime anti-mortem blood coagulation in the vessel's lumen or heart cavities. As a result, with the formation of clot thrombus. In contrast, post-mortem coagulation, post-mortem clot. Thrombus has 
rough consistency, dry consistency, red or gray color, clot as is gelatinous consistency, don't attach to the vessel wall. Look, the clinical thrombus is a dry, friable mess of gray to red color with rough surface. It's attached to the vessel wall. Postmortem clot, in contrast, is smooth, rubbery and gelatinous and is not attached to the underlying wall. Which conditions promoting formation of thrombi? General and local. As a general condition. Changing of blood, composition and rheological properties. Or derangement of coagulative and anticoagulative system ratio. Which local causes? Blood speed change. More slow. Blood turbulence and vessel wall injury due to inflammation or atherosclerosis injury. Which types of thrombi according to the composition? There are four types. White, white thrombus has, consists, fibrin, villofibrin, leukocytes and thrombocytes, platelets. This type of thrombus we can see in the arteria. Red, red thrombus consists fibrin, platelets and erythrocytes. This type of thrombi we see in the veins more often. Mixed, white and red. This type of thrombus we can see in the aorta more often. With tail, this long type of thrombus. And fibrinose or hyaline. This type of thrombus we can see in small vessels, microcirculatory system. The next classification, types of thrombi regarding the vessel lumen, may be abstractive or obturating, may be perito or mural, and free ball valve. Free thrombus we can see in the heart cavities. <clears throat> this type of thrombus don't attach to the wall of heart. Which thrombosis consequences? Obstructive type leads to acute venous hyperemia in the veins or acute ischemia in the arteria with formation of infarction as a result of acute ischemia. Parietal type leads to prolonged ischemia with development of parenchyma atrophy and organ stroma sclerosis in the arteria and in the veins we see chronic venous hyperemia. Outcomes Outcomes of forma thrombus formation There are five outcomes. Three types are favorable and two are unfavorable. Which favorable outcomes of thrombus? First, aseptic autolysis. We see full lysis of thrombus. It's more favorable outcome. Organization, canalization and revascularization. We can't see autolysis in the thrombus with the replacement of uh, thrombus to connective tissue appearance of canals and appearance of new small vessels and restoration of blood flow, partial restoration of blood flow and calcification and formation of label lights. Which unfavorable outcomes? First, breaking loose from the vessel's wall and creating an embolus thromboembolus formation and septic autolysis of thrombus. Look, in those photos 
you can see causes of thromboformation in veins, uh, vein system, general vein system. Enlarged veins Atherosclerosis in the arteria, as a ball thrombus in the heart cavity. Histologically, we see vessel wall and thrombus formation. Fibrin has pink color and erythrocytes and leukocytes. This Hyalinose, hyalin or fibrinose thrombus in the uh, macrocirculatory system. In this photo, you can see rare vascularization as a favorable outcome of thrombus formation. And septic autolysis is unfavorable outcome. And the last <coughs> process of disturbance of blood circulation is embolism. What is this embolism? It's a transportation by blood or lymph flow of particles which normally are not present there and obstruction of vessel lumen by those particles named emboli. <coughs> which emboli translocation? More often we see Autograde with the blood flow translocation. Rarely retrograde against the blood flow. And very, very rare translocation is paradoxal due to defects in ventricular or intertribal septum. Embolus can travel from the systemic venous circulation and bypassing the lung again get into the greater circulation through the foramen ovale. In this scheme you can see thromboembolism of lung artery through right part of heart in venous system to um, arteria to uh, lung arteria. There are seven types of embolism according to the em embolus nature. Thromboembolism, gas embolism, air embolism, fat or oil embolism, tissue or cellular embolism, microbial embolism and embolism by foreign bodies. What about thromboembolism? More often we see appearance of thrombi in the venous system and as a result of uh, this type of thromboembolism we can see <coughs> thromboembolism of lung artery. Which outcomes of thromboembolism of lung artery? This nature. Thrombus in the deep veins in the leg. And in this photo you can see thromboembolus in lung artery. Large thromboembolus. As a result of small thromboembolus of, uh, artery, of lung artery, we can see triangle infarctions in the lung of red color. As a result of large thromboembolus in the lung artery, we can see reflex and um, and death, sudden death, of of result of uh, of the result of um, sudden death, the result of um, reflex, spasm of coronary vessels and spasm of small bronchi. In the arterial blood floor, we can see which causes of thromboembolism in the arterial blood floor. Rheumatism, appearance of thrombi in the valves in the left part of heart. And atherosclerosis, which outcomes of thromboembolism in the left heart 
and uh, aorta and large arteries. Many, many necrosis in all organs, but not in the lung. Myocardial infarction, infarction in the brain, gangrene in the intestine or lower extremities. Histologically, we see thrombus. What's this embolus? This thrombus, with a, but not attached to the vessel wall. We see thrombus and not attached to the vessel wall, embolus. In this picture, you can see fatty, fatty embolus. Uh, which causes of fatty em, uh, embolus? Uh, destruction of fatty tissue, trauma of fatty tissue, uh, fractures of long bones, femur, for example, and uh, oil uh, injection in the veins. What can we see? Accumulation of fat, fats in the lungs and sudden death, or in the brain. In this picture, you can see tissue embolus, metastasis of tumor, of a malignant tumor. We see transport of malignant cells from first known to another organs through blood or lymph flow. And in the liver, you can see many, many nodes, secondary metastatic nodes uh, of malignant tumor. Histologically, you see, you can see malignant cells in the vessel. In this picture, you can see microbial embolism. Many, many secondary microbial metastatic nodes in the kidneys. In this photo, you can see colonia of bacteria in the kidneys. Which embolism consequences? Due to thromboembolism, uh, heart arrest due to pulmonary embolism. Many infarctions in many, many organs. Tumor dissemination due to tissue embolism. Generalization of infections. Microbial embolism. And formation of metastatic abscesses. This particle on, of if infected thrombi. Due to air embolism and occasion disease, gas embolism. Acute pulmonary failure and heart failure due to air and gas embolism. This information, my information is finished and thank you for your attention.